Welcome back everyone. I had a request from a viewer in Germany who asked if I could do a video on motorcycles. So I thought I would try my hand at taking this speedy little bike and making it look like it's going a bit faster by adding some motion blur. Let me show you how I did this in the Affinity Photo 2 beta version. I started with this image I downloaded from pixabay.com. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to follow along. I'll go to select in the menu and then choose Select Subject. If you don't have the beta version yet, you can just go to your Selection Brush tool and paint over the bike to select it, but this feature of the beta version is quite a bit faster. As you can see, it selects the whole bike and rider in one click. So, that's pretty cool. But, now I'll go to my Selection Brush tool to work on the details. I want a pretty good selection here, so I've made my brush head pretty small by clicking the left square bracket key a few times. To undo areas that are selected by accident, just hold the Option or Alt key to remove them. This has turns out to be a pretty tough selection. I've sped it up a little bit so as not to bore you. But basically, I'm adding or subtracting small amounts of the selection at time by holding or releasing the Option or Alt key while painting. If you don't get all these little areas in between, the blur effect may look a little weird. All right, I think I've got a pretty good selection here, so I'll go to the top toolbar and select Refine. Yep, that looks good enough. So I'll go to the Output drop-down, select New Layer with Mask, and then click Apply. Okay, now what I'm about to do is a bit destructive, so I'll click on the background layer and then click Command or Control J to duplicate it. Then I'll turn the top background copy back on by clicking the little dot to the right of the layer. Next, I want to remove the bike and rider from the background so I don't end up blurring them too. To do this, I'll select my in-painting tool from the left-hand toolbar and I'll paint over them a little bit at a time. Oops, let me turn the top layer off so you can see what's happening. Okay, that's better. Now, I'll keep painting over this in little sections until the bike and rider are pretty much gone. I find that using a pretty small basic round brush head painting from the outside of the area in towards the middle generally works best. And try not to go too far over the edges of what you want to remove to help prevent any unnecessary distortion. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'll right click on the top background layer and I'll scroll down to rasterize. Then. I'll go to the Live Filters button at the bottom of the Layers panel and I'll scroll down to Motion Blur. I'll move this all the way up to 100% and click the Preserve Alpha checkbox to get rid of overblurred edges. I'll turn the Bike and Rider Cutout layer back on by clicking the dot to the right of the layer. Now, I want to introduce a separate blur to the Bike and Rider independent to the background. To do this, I'll select the top layer and click Command or Control J to duplicate it. Next, I'll select the lower cutout layer and then go back to my Live Filters button and select Motion Blur. I'll raise that up almost all the way too. But this time, I'm going to add a little rotation to the blur to match the angle of the bike, giving it a bit of an upward motion illusion. All right, last thing here. I don't want the blur on the front of the bike. So, with the Motion Blur filter still selected in the layer, I'll go to my Paintbrush tool in the left-hand toolbar, make sure the color is set to black, and I'll paint away the areas of blur I don't want to see. The Motion Blur adjustment acts like a mask, so black removes unwanted pixels. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. 
There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.